Gable Stevens was released from the WWE. Now, I got to take a look at that, and I was surprised. I was also disappointed because Gable has made tremendous sacrifices to be with the WWE. Gable Stevenson, who would have, were even told that, that it was offered. I can't go as far as to confirm for you that it was offered, but it would have been a contract with Bellator, a contract with the PFL to the point that they brought him to an event and interviewed him live. And there's rumors that they even did an NIL deal with him if he had college eligibility left. Rumors that he could have signed with the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He was offered $1 million to transfer from the University of Minnesota to Iowa and told that he could continue his professional wrestling training, that he was not going to be expected to take on a full schedule. They needed him for the Big Ten Championships and moreover for the NCAA Championships. He comes back, he makes a world team in the most impressive fashion you could imagine. I mean, truly, truly. He had a common opponent in Mason Paris. They had not met up. Gable had taken time off and gone to professional wrestling. So that's going to be the, the indicator, right? This common opponent's going to be an indicator, even if it's closer and Gable wins. But if it's closer, that's still an indicator. He spread the gap. It got They got further apart. This is really quite shocking. So Gable decides he's not going to go to Iowa, by the way. He also decides, and I must tell you, between the UFC, between Bellator, between the PFL, between taking the million dollars, between all the things that he could do, he went to the WWE. That, that's the most relevant. Now, this is a sacrifice. He is going to forego world championships, Olympic games, NCAA championships. He's going to forego all of these things and able to be able to do that. Now, they're going to do things for him as well, right? His life is going to change from a financial standpoint. He's also going to have a lot of fun. So I'm not acting as though it was all Gable for them, but a little, a little bit I am. He had all of these different offers, and he chose them. He made a commitment. He went out and had a match. One match that was televised. I don't know how many matches he's had. There's something called a dark match. A dark match would be done at a house show or could even be done at a TV taping, but it won't be placed on television. Okay, great. I don't know if he had those. I do know that he had a match with Corbin that was televised. I liked it. I didn't love it. I, I could tell you two guys that were, that were learning each other. I thought Corbin was just outstanding in every part of this. I thought Corbin's interview, standing face-to-face -face with one of the baddest men God ever made, possibly the baddest man alive, but one of the best that God ever made. And then Corbin also did those spots, and there was parts where he had to carry, and there was parts that he had to sell. Corbin got a 10 out of a 10 from me. But Gable? on my harshest day, was no lower than a seven. I'm talking about on my most critical day. And there was a lot of things that Gable did. There was also an understanding of the psychology. His psychology was way advanced for a guy doing his debut. His moves and his presentation, of course it needs work. Of course it wasn't perfect. It was his first match. But even with that in mind, and not letting that affect my scale, on my harshest, I wake up with a stick in my ass and I'm just angry at the world. He still, I still couldn't give him below a seven. But that isn't what the internet said. That isn't what other people said. And I'm not attempting to judge your opinions. I'm just telling the story the way that it happened. People were very critical of the match. Or they were only critical because of their understanding, their awareness of who this was, and the expectation that they had. But fair enough. Fair enough. If you're taking a TV spot, you got to be able to beat the other guys that didn't get that spot. I understand. You had the right to your opinion. Either way, it was his first match. It's going to be a learning lesson. Of course. That should go without even needing to be said. But I do need to say it because today they announced that they released him. Last week, Cable announced he's not going to go to the World Championships. He's not going to go and represent the United States at the World Championships, which has massive implications to Gable personally 
Should he want to make the Olympic team next year? Starting with, will there even be a spot on the Olympic team, right? The World Championships one year prior to the Olympic Games is the first qualification tournament that we have. Top 10, you're in as a country. So if Mason goes, Mason's a former world champion. Mason might go and win the world championship. But I'm just suggesting for you, if he doesn't and they don't get qualified, who is going to go qualify the way? Well, probably Gable, and that was not within his plans. His plans for 2024 was not to fly around the world and go to qualification events. But that is going to greatly change. Moreover, if Mason does do what he's expected to do, Mason is for sure expected to be a top three, but if he's a top three, I think he can win the tournament. If he's a top three for the trials next year, Mason will sit out. Gable will have to go through the tournament in the grind, which is not what he's expecting to do. So it's a very different situation, and I don't have enough information. I don't know why Gable pulled out of the world. I do have enough information to tell you it was not due to illness or injury. He's healthy and he's ready. So I assume, and I'm, I must say, this is Chael assuming, that it had something to do with a commitment to professional wrestling and the timeline just didn't work out. That could be way off. But I think it's along that vein. And I think that that adds to the comment and the premise th that I'm trying to make right now of the sacrifice that Gable has made to the WWE. I don't like that they released him at all. I think it's a very dirty move. And I will share that I don't have the backstory. But I can also tell you that this happened this morning. And within the WWE and the way that works, if you're released, like you aren't tipped off. So when Gable went to bed last night, he would think he was with the WWE. It's not like a call comes and goes, hey, a week from now, this is going to be made public. Get your statement ready. Get your act together. He had already pulled out of the world. That's not a situation where he can now raise his hand and say, hey, I want that spot back. That's not the way it works. It's now Mason's spot. I'm just saying, there's a lot that goes into this. And where is Gable going to go? Is he going to rewind the tape and say, all right, great. I'm going to stay right here where I'm king. I'm going to finish this out and go down as the greatest ever, which is the path that I'm already on. Or is he going to be frustrated? He's going to throw his hands up a little bit. Say, hey, UFC, hey, Bellator, hey, PFL, remember those talks you wanted to have? Well, now I want to have them too. That's a possibility. I know that Gable has committed and is going to return to the University of Minnesota. I know that that was the plan as of a week ago. But Gable also had different information within his life when he made that decision. I know that that was the plan. I hope he does it. If we're looking to fill a financial void, I believe he will do it. There won't be any wrestler that gets a dollar until Gable turns that dollar down first. The only thing that will be left for anybody is what Gable says no to. I hope he sees it that way. I hope he knows when one door closes, another door opens. I hope he knows his future is not only as bright, it's more bright. He was locked in. Now he's not locked in anywhere. Now he's back at the table. This negotiation is going to go much better this time around. But that is the update on Gable Stevenson.